Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I think you're going to be pretty interested in this. I know I was when I uh, first heard about it and tried it out. Um, so if you've ever struggled with dynamic background extraction in PixInsight, um, then this program might be for you. It's called Graxpert and uh, it's designed specifically to perform background extraction on our astronomical images. Now it's completely free and you can go to their website and download it. It's standalone so it doesn't, it's not a plug-in for PixInsight or Photoshop. It's a standalone program that you uh, run on your Windows or your Mac computer. Um, they even have a Linux version I believe. Uh, but you basically run it standalone and you bring your image in and uh, you can run background extraction on it and then save it and uh, bring it uh, back into PixInsight to continue processing it basically. So uh, what I did was uh, I tried it out and uh, wanted to see how it worked and uh, I think it worked pretty fantastic actually. Um, did it do a better job than PixInsight's dynamic background extraction? I don't know. I'll leave that up to you guys to decide once you uh, try it out and so forth. I'm going to show you in this video uh, two images, one that was done with Graxpert and one one that uh, was done with the uh, dynamic background extraction in PixInsight. Uh, just to give you an idea, um, you can decide which one you think looks better uh, from the video. Probably hard to do, but uh, it'll give you a good comparison anyways. But I encourage you to go and uh, download and, and check it out. And uh, as I uh, recall, they do have a Discord channel as well. And I believe it is Dark Matters is what you would look for on Discord. And you can go there. Now, I, I went to the Discord channel to check it out and it's mostly um, it's well it's not in English uh, most of it's in uh, another language so a little difficult to uh, navigate and, and read through um, maybe they will add an English component to the discord uh, channel that uh, people can communicate in I'm not sure that'll be up to them but uh, you can certainly uh, look them up on discord and uh, uh, check out uh, dark matters so um, where do you get it? Uh, basically, let me just switch screens here. So you're going to go to uh, graxbert.com and this is what you'll see. Uh, you'll see the uh, website here and you can download for uh, Windows and Mac and Linux and it'll give you a little uh, overview of Graxbert and give you some examples and so forth. But I basically encourage you to go and, and download it, which is what I did. So I'm using Windows, so I downloaded it for uh, the Windows platform and uh, this is what it looks like when you uh, first open it up so it's just going to be um a black uh, black screen that's your background uh, there's no image loaded yet and um, you're gonna want to load an image so we're gonna go to uh, load image and I already have one picked out here uh, that I'm gonna use for this example um, and this is from my uh, this is from my buddy uh, Tyler Bowman over at Astroworks on uh, YouTube and Facebook. If you want to check them out, I encourage you to go and uh, check out uh, their YouTube channel and uh, uh, you might glean some uh, useful information from their channel as well. Um, so uh, don't forget to subscribe and like to mine though. That's very important to do uh, because uh, like I always say, makes me happy and it helps the channel grow. So um, if you find this video useful or any of my other videos useful, please consider are subscribing. Um, as a side note, just in fact, before we get into Graxpert any further, um, I looked at the analytics of my of my YouTube channel, and surprisingly enough, 55% uh, of viewers of my YouTube channel are not subscribers. So tell me what I'm doing wrong. Um, I would love to have you all sign up and uh, you know be a subscriber of my channel. Uh, so if you have any uh, thoughts or comments uh, with regards to that, uh, let me know. I was actually very surprised that 55% of the viewers uh, do not uh, subscribe to the channel. So maybe uh, there's something I could do to, to change your mind and get you to subscribe. Uh, let me know in the comments below. All right, so back to Graxpert here. Uh, the first thing we're going to want to do is load the image, which we did. We loaded our image. Um, and the next thing you're going to want to do is probably crop it. So they have a crop function that you can use and uh, you can turn it off and on uh, just so you can see it here I'll I'll turn it on and then you can just basically uh, move things around uh, just to crop the image uh, how you want I'm just going to do a, a quick crop here and uh, and then you apply the crop okay 
Uh, next up, you're going to want to, um, uh, you're going to want, I, I guess I, I should have, I should back up a second here before you crop, you want to be able to see the image. Now, Graxpert saves uh, your last uh, uh, settings that you did. So when you open another image, it'll be applied automatically to that image. Um, and you can change that, of course. But what you're going to want to do is uh, when you first uh, uh, open up the image, it's going to have no stretch to it uh, for a first time user. And you're going to want to uh, stretch that I recommend and, and so does Graxpert uh, they recommend using the maximum stretch so you can really see the gradients in your image uh, easily enough and we can see a gradient happening here uh, going across the image uh, yours may be more complicated or less complicated uh, every image is different and everyone is imaging from different locations and different situations so the gradient will uh, appear differently uh, in yours possibly but in this image here we can see a strong gradient occurring in the uh, top right corner Corner, which travels across the image to the lower left so we're gonna to want to fix that up so after we have uh, stretched the image so we can see we, we do our crop function so I just did a little reverse there when I showed you my apologies but um, you do your crop uh, if you have any uh, bad edges from stacking that you want to remove from the image do your crop uh, once it's stretched uh, you can see the gradient and um, this is where you're going to lay in the sample points similar to dynamic background extraction and pics and site you're gonna you're gonna place background now I experimented with this um, you know in PixInsight and in, in Graxpert too, they actually they recommend that you don't place uh, sample points or try not to place sample points on Nebulosity. Um, I actually did a little experiment with that just to see. Um, I had placed sample points on some of the Nebulosity uh, throughout this image, and uh, it. Um, it it removed the gradient fine, uh, but it also removed a little bit of the nebula, uh, some of the features in it. I noticed the one that, uh, the, the version I did that did not, um, uh, that I did not place uh, many sample points on nebulosity. I noticed that the uh, the fainter background nebulosity sort of uh, was a little more visible in the image. So you wanna be careful about uh, how you do it, but it's really not that complicated once you get going on it. Um, so. What you're going to do is you're going to uh, just basically click uh, create grid. Now you can, before you do that, um, your display points is set by default. Um, you don't have to uh, work with uh, flooded generation at all. What you do want to work with maybe though is the number of points per row. Um, you can increase that or decrease that. Uh, they don't recommend that you max it out or anything uh, with regards to this. Uh, probably better to start out um, with a lower number and uh, get a feel for the positioning of the sample points. Uh, the grid tolerance can be adjusted and the default is one. The grid tolerance basically is the um, transition between the sample points, how smooth it is. Uh, so you can increase or decrease that uh, depending on uh, your image and what you're dealing with. I'm just going to leave it uh, at the default and uh, I'm going to set it to uh, sample points of uh, eight per row. And then you click create grid and Graxpert will go to work and it'll lay in some uh, sample points. Now, you could technically, you could run this and have it remove the gradient, uh, but you're going to risk losing some of the faint nebulosity uh, in, the, uh, in the background, as I said. Not completely. But I did notice that it wasn't quite as strong, wasn't quite as apparent um, if, uh, if I did place uh, sample points over uh, top of the nebulosity. And that's similar to PixInsight, uh, same sort of idea. You don't really want to do it. Uh, some images are hard because there really isn't a lot of background. The, the image is uh, uh, filled with nebulosity, so it's hard to pick out uh, specific, uh, specific spots of background. Um, in which case, if you want, you can actually look at, I have a dynamic background extraction video DBE that I demonstrate uh, a way of doing uh, dynamic background extraction in PixInsight that works pretty effectively in situations where you have a lot of nebulosity throughout the image so you can check that video out I'll put a link in the description to it in case you're interested um, 
Okay, so with Graxpert uh, laying in the sample points, uh, you'll notice it didn't lay in over any in over here. Uh, we're going to want to do that. So you just basically left click on it and uh, left click and you can lay in your own sample points uh, manually into this. So I'm just going to lay in a few here, uh, just like that. Uh, just so that we have uh, uh, have it uh, working on the gradient in this corner as well. Now for the rest of the image, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move the sample points over. So I'm left clicking and holding on the square and that allows me to uh, reposition the uh, sample points. So I'm just going to do that real quick here. Reposition these ones. Uh, I am going to keep these ones. They are sitting over nebulosity, but I need some sample points uh, around the image in order for uh, Grax Graxpert to uh, do its job. The ones in the middle here, I'm going to remove those um, because I, like I said, I, I don't want to have too many sample points over top of nebulosity. So uh, to remove a sample point in Graxpert, you simply right click with your mouse on the uh, square. So just right click on it. Um, it is it uh, intuitive? Uh, it's it's not terrible. You get used to it, but it, you gotta you know really center that uh, cursor on on the uh, square and then right click uh, in order to to accomplish uh, deleting. So um, it would be interesting if uh, Graxpert actually made it possible to increase the sample box size. I know in dynamic background extraction in PixInsight, I often increase the sample box size because I, I am actually sampling more background then than stars. Uh, this might be something useful for Graxpert as well to uh, uh, include, introduce into the program um, and, you know, it, it give it as a, an option at least that you can uh, adjust the sample point boxes, the size of them. That would also make it easier for uh, selecting and uh, deleting them too. So anyways, uh, let's just go back here and I'm just going to continue just deleting some of these. This one here I might move over slightly and I will, and that's another thing I'm going to show you too, you can uh, move the image around. Uh, um, on the uh, on the workspace uh, as you want and if you use your uh, mouse wheel uh, on your mouse you can zoom in and out of the image okay so I've got sample points uh, laid out and it was pretty quick. Uh, I mean, you get pretty fast at this uh, when you're doing it. So this probably took actually longer than uh, than what it had to. But uh, for the sake of demonstration, uh, here we are. And once this is done, uh, once you've got your sample points laid out, the next part is uh, the uh, inter uh, interpolation method uh, you're going to want to choose from. Now RBF is kind of a, a balanced approach to it. It's uh, not as it, it gives a balance in terms of uh, um, its uh, quality, the quality of gradient remover, but, uh, removal but also the uh, um, uh, the resources required uh, by the computer in order to process it. So it's kind of a balanced approach in the sense that it doesn't take too long and it does a good job and it's the recommended default actually I believe uh, for uh, Graxpert. Splines uh, is not as, uh, I don't want to say not as effective, but it's not as good as RBF in terms of uh, gradient removal. And it is the least resource intensive uh, of the uh, the three methods, three models here. Uh, the uh, grinking, uh, I believe it's called, um, is the, uh, the most uh, advanced, but they actually say that's really, you know, for scientific work. Um, if you're... Uh, trying to remove a gradient from a scientific image that you would use this and it's the most resource intensive as well so it takes longer to uh, run but uh, I just used the uh, the RBF and I got a great result from it and um, I didn't really notice uh, a huge difference between the three uh, except for you know resources and processing time um, but you can decide give it a try feel it out see what you think uh, is the best one for you to use for your image so uh, I'm going to set it to RBF uh, smoothing factor. I'm going to leave at one, which is the default. And then I'm going to click on calculate background. And what this is going to do is Graxpert's going to look at the image, going to analyze it, and it's going to basically remove the gradient uh, from the image. So let's click that and let it go to work and we'll see what it comes up with. Okay, so Graxpert uh, completed the background extraction.
and we can see that it uh, removed the gradient from the image. Uh, now, uh, keeping in mind that this is the uh, most aggressive uh, stretch that I've got in this so it uh, you know if we knock it back a little bit uh, it won't be uh, quite as uh, intense and uh, overcooked looking um, maybe that's a little too little let's try 15% just to see there we go okay so that's not bad that gives us a good idea so as you can see it removed the gradient uh, quite nicely let's just go back to the original I can show you what the original looked like so that's the original before Graxpert applied its background extraction to the image and that is after the background extraction and to save this uh, you've got various uh, options you've got TIFF You've got FITS, uh, you've got the uh, native uh, Pixin site, and you've got that in 32-bit and 16-bit, depending on your choice. I'm going to save it as a 32-bit native uh, Pixin site uh, file, and I'm going to click Save Processed. And then it just calls up and it wants me to save it. I won't save it because I've already got it saved. And that's it. That is how it works. Uh, pretty straightforward. It's It's been designed to be as simple as possible to use and you might find it very effective. Uh, if you need some help, it's got some, inf you know, some info in there, a help section, and uh, it's got an advanced section that you can make some uh, tweaks to things if you want. Uh, the defaults work really well. I don't necessarily recommend that you play with those, but if you want to experiment, by all means, uh, make some adjustments and see if it uh, has an improvement on the image or if it doesn't. Now, uh, let's switch over to uh, let's switch over now let's switch over to Pixinsight and I'm going to just bring up Pixinsight here right uh, right there there it is okay so there's Pixinsight and I've got the uh, the image uh, that had the uh, Graxpert applied, the background, Graxpert did the background extraction to it right here. This is the original image right here. And uh, let me just uh, go and apply a uh, dynamic background extraction to this image uh, in Pixinsight, and then we can see what the difference uh, is and, and how it looks. We'll see, I'll, what I'll do is I'll mix them up, uh, and then I'll come back and uh, show you um, uh, the two images as they've had their background extraction done, and you can decide or try to figure out which one is which. Okay, so let me go do that real quick and then we can come back and uh, have a look at the uh, end result here. Okay, so we're back and dynamic background extraction was applied to the other image and I've mixed them up so that uh, now you guys can sort of tell me which one you think is which. Uh, leave a comment below and uh, let me know uh, what you think. Um, is it the uh, the left image that was done by Pixinsight with dynamic background extraction or was it the right image that had the dynamic background extraction applied to it uh, by Pixinsight? Uh, one of these images uh, was done in Pixinsight and the other was done in uh, Graxpert. So you have to tell me uh, which one you guys think it is. Okay, that's a quick look at Graxpert, a new astronomical background extraction program that you can use on your astro images. Now, uh, just a quick note with regards to it, uh, they do say that the uh, the Graxpert works best on Windows right now. Um, the Mac uh, platform is a little problematic. They're actually looking for feedback, people to uh, try Graxpert uh, who have a Mac and uh, let them know what the, uh, the problems are that they're encountering so they can iron out the bugs and, and whatnot. Uh, and you might want to uh, get involved with that if you have a Mac. Uh, check out their Discord channel, look up Dark Matters. And um, the, uh, the feedback that you're going to give them is going to be invaluable for making Graxpert uh, better uh, functioning on the Mac platform. But in terms of Windows, it's going to work fine. It worked fine for me. I had no, no issues at all. I am, like I said, on the, uh, the Windows platform. So, all right, that is it for this video. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Really appreciate that. Hit the bell notification for new videos that uh, I'll be releasing in the future. And we'll see you again soon. Take care for now and clear skies.